Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith here in State College. We just got done watching Penn State practice. You'll be able to see the entirety of our thoughts on August 14th when our show debuts, but give the people a sense of what we saw. And I think the big question coming in, guys, is last year was unprecedented. We hadn't seen a situation like that really in the history of college football. This year, does it figure to be easier or more difficult? I'd say more difficult for a few reasons. A year ago, we sat here and Bill O'Brien had named Matt McGloin the starting quarterback before camp started. They were established at, at quarterback. They had great leadership a year ago. They, they were going to have good leadership with Mike Motti and those other seniors regardless. But then when the crises of the NCAA hit, Howard, I think their leadership got extraordinary. And then the third obvious thing is the numbers were bad last year. They're worse this year. Yeah, obviously it's going to be more difficult because they're another, obviously, as you said, a different set of challenges, but the expectations there there now. Uh, if you can go through what you went through last year and still be able to put to, put together the type of season that they had, the expectations not only in house but obviously outside is going to be higher than you would normally expect. But I think this is a re really talented team, and, and the reality is I think that they can go out and as we've talked about health. If they can stay healthy, they're going to compete with anybody that's out there. They're going to be able to move the ball from an offensive standpoint. They'll be able to develop defensively and, and get better at that. So I think this is a team that's going to see as challenged, but I think they're going to be much better this year. And I think two positives this year over last year is, remember, they lost to Ohio U and Virginia early in the year, the first two games. They were 0-2. Those were two matchup opponents. They could have won those games. That wasn't, a, that wasn't because of personnel. They can't afford to lose a matchup game this year, and I don't think they will. And the other thing is they had to install an entire new kick game, defense, and offense a year ago. This is the second year basically with the same staff and the same system. People obviously want to know about the quarterback situation. It's an interesting one. You have Tyler Ferguson, who was here in the spring, a junior college transfer. You have Christian Hackenberg, incredibly highly regarded, highly recruited, five-star type prospect. What did you guys think of what you saw from each of those two? I'd say Tyler Ferguson looks like a guy who's been in this program longer than just spring and four or five days in camp. I, I think that the spring practice a year ago has helped him and it's given him an edge on Christian Hackenberg. I think Christian Hackenberg is as advertised. I think however many stars they gave him, gave him they could give him a couple more. I mean, <laughs> he is an incredibly talented guy. He's a young guy who makes, he looks better in the smaller drills and he looks like a younger guy in the bigger drills. That's pretty typical of a young quarterback. But we saw him in seven on seven and I really like what he did. Although he did throw an interception on his first uh, pass attempt, but what I liked was that he found a rhythm. He th there were about two passes that he threw in there where it was right on the money, anticipated the window opening for the dig route coming across the middle. So he shows you that he has the ability. So it won't be long. He's not far away. But I believe having Ferguson here, a guy that he can look up and learn to and also compete with, both have strong arms, is only going to help this program moving forward. Defensively, I know there are some big-name players. I mean, Deion Barnes was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. He was absolutely outstanding last year, a great pass rusher. You've got some experienced linebackers, Glenn Carson, Mike Hall, some good players in the secondary. Adrian Amos kind of one who comes to mind immediately. It seems to me, though, in watching them, that there is a pretty serious drop-off when they get to the number twos. How big a concern is the depth, Howard? Well, it's a big concern, and you, it has to be, because when you look particularly at the linebacker position, they're not there yet. But one guy that has to make plays is Wartman. And the reason I say so is since we've been covering this team, uh, you've had Navarro Bowman, who's a all-pro NFL player, Hodges, Gerald Hodges, who really played well. And one of the things that they could do with those guys, what they could play – base defenses in nickel situations. So that linebacker, that wheel linebacker, didn't have to come off the field. Wartman shows that he can make plays. There's no question about it. He just has to get more and more reps and get comfortable with the defense, and they'll be all right. Yeah, much like the spring, when the second defense comes out, that, that's really the first time you, you, it looks like the scholarship limitations are impacting Penn State in a, in a significant way. Let, let me tell you a conversation that the staff may be having midseason. Do we have the best 11 players on defense? Meaning this. Linebacker's a problem with depth. Let, it, let's say a linebacker's going to miss a game. Are they better off playing with four down linemen, two linebackers, and five secondary guys? When, when your depth is hurt and you're in a staff room and – it, it, it's your schemes to have four down, three linebackers, and four. If that doesn't put your best 11 on the field, then you start tweaking your scheme. So hopefully they won't get to that situation, but it's certainly a situation that they'll be prepared for. Again, we will expand on this on our show on the 14th of August. We encourage you to watch that 
on BTN. That's going to do it, though, for us here on BTN.com.